Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I recently put out a tutorial that showed you how to make anything look like metal using graphite powder and shellac. And while this is a great effect, it can be a bit expensive, especially if you're doing a large project. So after receiving a few messages about this, I put my thinking cap on to come up with a method that's a bit more cost effective and uses some stuff that you'd find around the house. So let's get to it. As with most projects, I needed a part to demonstrate the effect, so I'm using this 3D printed antique lock that I 3D modeled and printed. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to download one for yourself. The next thing I'll need is some black acrylic paint. You can use any style of paint, just make sure it has a matte finish. The last thing we need is baking soda. This is going to thicken the paint and will allow me to give it some texture during the painting process that will make it resemble cast iron. To make the lock easier to paint, I put some double-sided tape on a popsicle stick to give it a bit of a handle. This isn't necessary for the effect, it's just a favorite method of mine for handling small parts. With that taken care of, it's time to mix our paint and baking soda. I found that it's roughly a one-to-one -one mix, but you can add more if you find that it's difficult to brush on. Once it's got a good consistency, I'll grab an acid brush and get to painting. I like using acid brushes because the bristles are really stiff and they're good for creating texture. I'll start by covering the entire piece and then use a pouncing or stippling motion to create peaks and valleys in the paint. This will help to give it that old rusted out appearance. If your piece has any fine details like mine does, you'll want to make sure not to go too heavy in those areas so that they'll still be visible to highlight later. It's okay to be messy with this process and don't be afraid to add too much. You can use it to work around the entire piece and help build up to your final texture. This is a great technique that could be used for creating old metal strap door hardware for a dungeon, prop weapons like swords or handcuffs, and just about anything that you want to look like it's been left to erode out in the elements. As you can see, it holds its shape really well. Plus the baking soda gives the paint a grittier, sandy texture. If you really want to build up the finish, apply your first coat of the paint and baking soda mixture and then set it aside to dry. Once it's completely dry, apply a second coat. When I'm happy with how it looks, I set it aside to dry and went to grab some paints to help sell the rusty appearance. I'm going with two favorites, Burnt Sienna and Hot Saffron. In addition to those paints, I'll be thinning them with a bit of matte medium or glaze. This helps to give them a bit of translucency and extends the working time of the paint so that I can apply it and wipe it off as needed to achieve just the right rust effect. I started with the Burnt Sienna and then switched to the Hot Saffron as a highlight, 
being sure to work the paint into the details and wiping off any excess that looks a bit too heavy handed. This approach allows you to build up to your final effect, so don't worry about nailing it on the first pass. Plus, the amount of glaze used determines just how strong your rust highlights will appear, so you'll want to test out your mix to get a feel for it. You may have noticed that I've been mixing the burnt sienna and hot saffron paint. This is to help create subtle variations in the rust color to prevent it from looking too high contrast. It's also a great way to create depth in your paint finish. Something to consider when you're painting is how the piece will be seen. If it'll be in dim lighting, you may want to make the paint a bit more dramatic so that it can still be seen in the dark. If it'll be under brighter lighting, you may want to go with a more realistic approach. A few last touches of our rust highlights, plus a bit of clear coat off camera, and I think it's safe to call this one done. And there you go. All the grit and texture of real metal without actually using real metal. Plus, I'm pretty sure most of us have baking soda around the house. Anyhow, leave me a comment below and tell me how you might use this technique. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, go make something.